Hi guys, this is Pete, N6QW, and I want to share with you um, <laughs> kind of my latest creation, which is the use of a uh, Silicon Labs SI5351 DDS chip that uh, is uh, being driven by an Arduino Nano, and uh, the configuration of this chip has three outputs. So one of the outputs is configured as a uh, standard uh, VFO, and the uh, Another output is uh, configured of a, as a selectable uh, BFO. Uh, this transceiver is known as the J-Bomb that I built several years ago, and it has a 9 megahertz uh, IF. And um, so the, uh, to operate on upper and lower sideband, you need uh, crystals at uh, 90015 or 89985. And so uh, this uh, little device right here, as you see a close-up in a second, is uh, is capable of generating those and is in fact uh, uh, has the capability and facility so that you can switch uh, depending upon what band you're in. I have set the uh, VFO to operate above the incoming signal frequency so in the case of uh, 20 meters uh, this device is operating uh, with the VFO at 23 megahertz and uh, because there's a sideband inversion with a LO above, uh, I'm employing the 90015, which is normally the lower sideband crystal, uh, as uh, to deco detect the uh, upper sideband signals. Again, this is Pete N6QW, and I'm demonstrating uh, my new um, uh, my new uh, DVS here that uh, I simply haywired into uh, the uh, J-bomb here, and uh, just with some coax on the bench here yesterday. Um, uh, which is the first of November, I actually made a contact with this. So this morning I wanted to um, maybe um, give you a, a little better uh, feel of some of the uh, the aspects of the device. Uh, there was uh, There's much work being done by several hams across the world uh, to employ this uh, SI5351. One of those is uh, Jason NT7S and he has a blog. Another one is Premzek um, SQ9JNE and another is uh, a good friend of mine, Tom Hall, AK2B. And um, uh, the, the code uh, that I'm using is, is kind of a conglomerate of, uh, of work that these three individuals have done. And I have made some modifications. Um, my display will actually tell you uh, what BFO frequency you're using because I can't keep them straight. And uh, this is a continuous tuning. Uh, one of the features of the code is it lets you uh, uh, select the step increment, uh, the rotary, uh, the switch on the rotary encoder, depress by depressing that, will let you go from a nominal uh, boot up at 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz, uh, 10 kilohertz, uh, and 100 kilohertz. Now, I, I found something with a code here. Uh, when you do that, uh, the display does not follow what the frequencies are, and that seems a little weird, but I think it's the way in which the uh, code is written uh, to uh, handle the, the, the decrementing of, through the various uh, uh, positions on the frequency display. Uh, I, I have, uh, you have the ability here to actually connect this via serial port to your computer, and I have connected it to the computer, and I, I asked it to it print out the discrete frequencies. Uh, the frequencies on the computer uh, follow <laughs> what you would think they were would be, but the uh, frequencies as displayed on the display uh, do not. So uh, there's a little more work to be done there. Um, uh, you know, hiccups and burps when this, when this stuff first comes out, uh, people go through uh, uh, a lot of gyrations and finally get it to work. Uh, the Minima group, uh, that's the, uh, the Farhan new transceiver, is uh, also working with this device. I, I don't know any specific individuals, but uh, Someone forwarded some posts to me, and uh, uh, already there's uh, some flags being raised about uh, phase noise and other problems with this device. Uh, I haven't really gotten to the point where I'm able to, uh, to really make those determinations, and I really don't have the sophisticated equipment to do it. I can only use my tin ears, and, uh, and so far it sounds pretty good. So uh, I I'm sure there is some birdies, and I'm sure there's some phase noise. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily take the stand of downing this as a, as a possibility because uh, those who use the 9850, AD9850 in these DVSs uh, well remember uh, when that first got launched, uh, oh, all kinds of problems and uh, all kinds of negative comments. So uh, to the minimum, guys, uh, I've got something working here. 
Uh, don't know how well it works, uh, but uh, if you're watching, uh, it may be of some interest to you. Again, this is Pete N6QW. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little tuning here and uh, just see if we can uh, copy some signals. So again, this is the DVS board right here, which uses the Nano to drive uh, the SI5351 um, uh, board that comes from Adafruit Industries. Uh, you can buy these uh, for about less than eight bucks, uh, not including shipping. And I highly recommend you use UPS. I had some mail to me and they're still yet to come. So uh, not a lot, of, a lot invested here. Uh, total cost is probably uh, with the display and everything else is less than $30 in you get a BFO and a, and a VFO, so uh, that, that's kind of hard to beat. As a matter of fact, uh, some guys are configuring the DDS not as a tunable device, but as a substitute for a, a BFO in a receiver so that you could select upper sideband, lower sideband, and even CW because it has three outputs. So uh, where can you buy three crystals for $8? Uh, you can't. So uh, th that's another possibility is, uh, as a matter of fact, using several of these in a, um, uh, for, for those who are raising the flag about, uh, you know, crosstalk and phase noise and everything else, uh, there's a possibility you could buy, put two of these in a radio and uh, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg, uh, one uh, to generate the uh, BFO signals and another uh, still to generate the VFO. And you would need a display for the, uh, uh, for the BFO, and as a matter of fact, the, uh, a little selector switch uh, would, would be all you need once you have it programmed. Uh, I did have an interesting experience with the Nano right here. Uh, I bought these, uh, I bought several of them from Amazon at a really good price. When I tried to load the code, uh, it hiccuped and burped and uh, said it couldn't find the FTDI um, U USB interface. As I later discovered, uh, some of these uh, bargain boards have counterfeit FTDI chips and somewhere in the line, uh, <laughs> That, that, that uh, particular uh, device driver is no longer automatically detected. So uh, there is a fix on, the, on YouTube that tells you how to manually load those. Uh, the three boards I have, I manually load them, they all work fine. So uh, uh, all Arduinos are not connected equally. So uh, enough me talking here. Again, this is Pete N6QW. And uh, I just lost 